to another episode of Made in Japan. Today, we're checking out Gundam Battle Operation next on the PlayStation Network. This is a game that's available on the Japanese PSN Network. It is an amazing game that's actually... I'm, I wish I spent more time playing it and getting to know it, as in like looking up tutorials to be able to understand the moon speak that's involved in playing this game. Uh, I understand the menu systems enough to be able to work my way through, pick up items, pick up characters, and understand that there's actually seasons of gameplay in this where locations change and events happen and you kind of play into that and unlock more characters and features as you go along. Obviously this is going to be a first look, kind of first 15 minutes of playing it, but at least I can show you what the gameplay is like in this. Have you ever played any of the Dynasty Warriors Gundam series? It's kind of like that, where you're just fighting against five other opponents, five other Gundams, rather than hordes upon hordes of them. So you are obviously a little bit more fragile. This is very much a 5v5 kind of gameplay. It's really, really fun. Also a pretty difficult if you're kind of, like the first few games I played in this, I got my ass absolutely beat. And you'll find that because you're on very basic Gundams compared to everybody else, you might actually uh, find it very difficult to combative uh, equal the other people around you. Now there will be a minor communication problem, but you do have the ability to kind of like quick speak from um, your uh, shortcut keys in the game, which means that you won't be completely left out of the conversation, but you may not be able to understand what it is exactly that you're saying. Now I'm pretty sure there is voice chat in the game as well, but um, I haven't run into a single player who's using voice chat so far, which is fairly common for the PlayStation Network. Now you basically have a uh, Blaster or, well, you have gun and sword combat, melee and guns. Mostly what you're going to find yourself doing is taking a tactical position and moving with a group of other players, especially in the lower levels, to be able to take down some of the larger, more powerful Gundams. The uh, entire mission basis of it is pretty much a uh, capture location and take down your enemy's counter before they take down yours whenever you have a set time. Now, obviously I'm not playing as one of the famous Gundams from any of the TV shows, other than just the fact that it's generic mobile suit. <laughs> so, forgive me for not actually being um, Strike Gundam or Gundam Wing or something in this, because I'm pretty sure that's for a much higher level of play. So, of course, you take locations, capture them as best you can, same as you would have done in the Dynasty Warrior series. But as you can see, there is um, only five capture points, a much smaller map, which is just an arena combat for you to play against other opponents. You can always uh, track and look for other people on your map, but uh, personally, because I'm actually playing as a much weaker character, um, I don't really have the defense capabilities or the, the experience to really take down these guys, I've decided to go and take locations more than anything else. It's probably the better choice whenever you start out playing it that you kind of make sure to play to your uh, team's defenses. If you've got a couple of guys who are really, really good at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and you're not, why would you jump into the battle? Because all you're going to do is tick down your uh, team's counter. The more times you die, the more damage you do to the team, so better to stay alive as long as you possibly can and just dodge the opponents when you move around. Now because I've taken this long we kind of side run and I can see on the main map most of the guys are all clustered in one area, I've tried to take a location that's much deeper into the enemy territory, which can pay off very well because it forces your enemy back into uh, previous spawn points so they can't spawn in at this location uh, as easily as they would have previously. They can spawn in in the location right next to it of course, but um, if you can take them all the way back to their own base, you can pretty much just do spawn camp and kill them, which can be a little bit cruel and unusual, but really good players can actually take, take back the location from there, which is really surprising. Yeah, it feels all coast is clear. I think I'm feeling pretty safe. Oh shit, they're already taking the spawn. Alright, so getting a couple of shots off at these guys. Ah, uh, uh, no! Yeah, I'm dying. So obviously there was like three mobile suits there all on that point, one guy coming in behind me, two guys already on the point. I got my ass beat and that person probably has a sniper so they really just, they just take one or two shots at people and that's all they need to do. Let's see if I can jump in here and try and take it back again. No, no, I doubt that's going to happen. There's too many guys. So the basically the blast with combat in it is you can lock onto your opponent using the right thumb stick and then use your blaster or dive attacks like that particular player is doing, and I'm trying to do there. Oh, that's a bit of a clusterfuck. The um, take down your opponent. The damage of each of your attacks is always listed. Like it's, a, it's a pretty much a numbers game whether or not you could take down a lot of the opponents uh, on your own, really, most of the time. I wasn't going to have much chance there. Maybe if I grab, caught one of them with a couple of blasts and then went for a grapple kind of throw thing that you can do, uh, which is uh, essentially the same as a, a melee attack, but getting close enough range to grab hold of your opponent if they don't stop you. 
it um, would have done a lot more damage. So I'm, do I'm gonna probably stay up here and keep myself out of the way because as you can see, they're pretty much holding their base and our base. So if I can sneak in back behind them here and take another point belonging to them that's further back, it'll force them to come chasing back after me rather than actually engaging with my teammates. So all is clear at the moment. Safe and sound. <laughs> so taking that point closer to the enemy base. Like, oh, there's somebody else with me as well. I'm not alone. Alright. And done. Alright, well, let's move out right here. That guy's probably gonna be able to hold up much better than I can. Boom, calling in my little light sled to be able to move faster. Obviously this still uses like the the boost, your actual like rocket pack, but the using this method of traveling is a lot more efficient than using the rocket packs in your back. I'm sure it'll be different for characters that are designed for like space combat that actually have a much bigger... Oh, okay. Unidentified ma machine. Right. So, occasionally this happens in the game. Um, I think it's whenever there's a, a massive upset or there's actually so, like a lot of dominance going on in the game. You can see there's... Oh, man. <laughs> Units will show up and jump into the battle. Matter on the side. Oh, what do you call that one? Uh, Big Zam? <laughs> no, it's uh, definitely not Big Zam. Big Zam's got big, massive feats. But um, yeah, there's uh, you find things like uh, Psycho Gundam or Big Zam will show up to actually mess with your team and uh, defend or attack at a particular point. I don't know what summons that in uh, because I haven't been playing the game long enough to really understand. But it's really cool whenever it happens if it's on your side of the team. Obviously, this is on the opponent's side, so I'm not going to try and engage with this thing too much. I might just uh, let that uh, sheet away there. Um, on the ground. Oh, that point isn't ours anymore, so I could jump in and take that point. Or, ooh. Alright, I can see that guy's actually sitting in the corner as well. Right, range is something that I haven't got um, full manage of yet, but you do have a set range to your attacks. You can only hit from so far away. The um, helpful part is that your lock on will kind of tell you that if you're in range or not, or if you're actually capable of even looking down that angle. Oh no, <laughs> that was a terrible move. <laughs> so you accidentally, you can either very easily accidentally flick from opponent to opponent that you have a lock on using the right stick. Uh, it's because the right stick is click in to select, and then left and right to um, to, to, to move which one that you're looking at. Um, you might as well say the rest of the controls. Uh, square is your main blaster attack, triangle is your machine gun on your shoulder and temp, usually. Circle is your uh, melee attack, and L and R, uh, well holding out R1 and pressing those buttons gives you alternate attacks, which is your like um, big blast, which is actually like, takes a wee while to charge from, and your grapple which also will allow you to uh, block as well. So let's see, can I take this guy down? Yep, okay, so activate the heat. He's unheated, let's see if we can actually do this. Boom, right, that didn't do any damage to him. Oh, all right, die, man. Yep, there you go. So if you hold down the L button, you can actually hover your character and go into kind of um, a much more controlled uh, targeting. It's a bit twitchy, I find, but you can unload your gun a lot faster. You can get a lot more blasts off. You can empty an entire clip. And it's a essentially free aim, which but it does lock you into position while you're doing it. So you lock into a hover, but if you're in a good spot like I was there now, you can just wheel down an opponent that's not even paying attention to you. Plus, it uh, since you don't lock on, it doesn't pull you onto their targeting radar. If you lock onto somebody, there's actually like a line that runs from one player to the other and uh, connects you together, so they know where you are, and it also means they can retaliate. Uh, <laughs> I'll give myself time to reload. Oh, okay. Nope, they saw me. <laughs> that's what happens whenever I get seen. And that's that sniper again from earlier on. Oh, man. I, I, I want to have that character for myself because that kind of fits with my way I play is stand back and pop a shot off whenever I can get one. But, um, yeah, that, that didn't help me at all. We're so close to the tail end of the match here. What, we got 50 seconds left. And we're good solid 2,000 points ahead. So if we take down one or two more guys, ugh, just, just out of range. Ah, uh, so annoying. Come on, guy. You can see that I'm actually shooting away, but I'm not actually I'm not gonna do any damage from there. Oh, there we go. Damn it. Oh, I don't have any target on, on my reheat overheat. Nope. Oh, and there goes my clip again. Right, let's go in there and get close. Let's go get down and dirty. There's a multiple guys in there. <laughs> no matter oh, somebody's behind. Get that guy. Oh, there's, they're just pummeling me. Oh. Boom! Another dude takes him out. Uh, I still have the health though, so I'm surviving. 10, 9, 8, 
Seven, yes. We've already finished this one and we're done. I'm really enjoying the gameplay in this. Um, it reminds me, like I said, a lot of Dynasty Warriors, but on a lot smaller scale. It's uh, really enjoyable, it's free to play, so you can pull it down from the Japanese PSN store and give it a try for absolutely nothing. If you spend money on this, you get access to other vehicles, or not other vehicles, other Gundams to be able to play as. But you do unlock Gundams as well via uh, receiving parts for completing battles, which you'll see shortly. You also have a pilot kind of scale that ranks you up which will make sure that you can like stay in even combat with other players. Uh, even though I'm playing on more like the weakest kind of default unit, you saw there was a couple of them similar enough that are actually there if you're a fan of the series. I'm a huge fan of Gundam. I really, really enjoy the the Dynasty Warrior series. They, they just kind of keep me coming back. I've just, I recently did uh, a whole five or six hours gameplay of Dynasty Warriors Gundam Reborn, which is on the PS3. If you're into mech combat, if you're into arena shooters, if you're into the, it's a, it's a third person CSGO with robots, I suppose is the best way to kind of like narrow it down. So guys, thanks very much for watching, it's been an absolute pleasure, I will see you again in the next episode of Made in Japan. Bye 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 bye